Welcome to our journey through the remarkable life of Konosuke Matusta, a visionary who founded one of the world's leading electronics companies, Panasonic. This first chapter delves into his humble origins, the early days of his company, and the initial challenges that shaped his future successes. Born in 1894 in a small village near Osaka, Japan, Konosuke Matusta's early life was marked by hardship and adversity. From a young age, he faced the economic struggles of his family, which forced him to start working at the age of nine. Despite his limited formal education, Matusta's keen interest in technology and innate business acumen became apparent early in his career while working as an apprentice at the Osaka Electric Light Company. In 1918, with meager savings and a single innovative idea, Matusta embarked on what would become a monumental journey in the business world. He invented a new type of light socket that was more versatile and user-friendly than those currently on the market. However, despite its ingenuity, his invention was initially met with little interest from the major electric companies. Undeterred, Matusta decided to start his own business in a small, two-room tenement, which he shared with his wife and brother-in-law. This modest setup marked the birth of Panasonic, then known as Matusta Electric Industrial Company, Limited. The early years of Panasonic were fraught with challenges. Japan's economic environment in the post-World War I era was unstable, and Matusta's company struggled to stay afloat. The small business faced frequent shortages of materials, financial instability, and the constant threat of bankruptcy. Nevertheless, Matusta's leadership was characterized by resilience and a forward-thinking mindset. He continuously sought ways to improve his products and processes, driven by a philosophy that emphasized the importance of contributing to society through business. One of Matusta's pivotal decisions during these challenging times was to expand his product line beyond light sockets. He began producing attachments that allowed people to use electrical appliances more efficiently in their homes. This not only diversified the company's offerings but also demonstrated Matusta's commitment to innovation and customer-centric product development. His ability to anticipate consumer needs and his relentless pursuit of improvement were crucial in slowly building the company's reputation and customer base. Furthermore, Matusta pioneered a unique approach to marketing and sales. At a time when direct sales were uncommon in Japan, he established a dedicated sales force that marketed his products door-to-door. -door. This direct engagement not only helped increase sales but also provided valuable insights into consumer needs and preferences, informing future product development and marketing strategies. Despite these innovative strategies, the road to success was not smooth. The company's breakthrough came with the introduction of an improved bicycle lamp, which became a hit in the market and stabilized the company's financial base. This success was a turning point, proving that persistence and faith in one's ideas could prevail over adversity. In closing this chapter, we see how Konosuke Matusta's humble beginnings and early struggles laid the groundwork for his philosophy of business and innovation. His story is not just one of overcoming odds but also of transforming challenges into opportunities for growth and learning. As we move into the next chapter, we will explore how Matusta built on these foundations to develop a distinctive philosophy of success that would guide Panasonic to become a global leader in electronics. As we venture further into the story of Konosuke Matusta and the evolution of Panasonic, this chapter focuses on the core philosophies that shaped his approach to business and underpinned the company's long-term success. These principles not only guided Panasonic through periods of challenge but also established Matusta as a pioneering figure in the world of business. Central to Matusta's philosophy was the idea of contributing to society through industrial progress. He believed that the purpose of a corporation was not merely to generate profits but to improve the lives of people. This belief led to the development of products that were affordable, reliable, and accessible to a broad audience. Matusta's commitment to social welfare is exemplified by his decision to produce and market an improved type of electric lamp during the 1920s that was significantly cheaper than its competitors, making it accessible to the masses and not just the affluent. Another fundamental aspect of Matusta's philosophy was his dedication to the democratization of consumption. He aimed to create a variety of household appliances that could enhance the quality of life for ordinary people, thus democratizing access to technologies that were previously available to only a few. This approach not only broadened Panasonic's market but also fostered a deep connection between the company and its customers, viewing them as partners in a shared journey towards a better life. Quality and innovation were also pillars of Matusta's business philosophy. 
He instilled a culture of continuous improvement and attention to detail within the company, which became known as the tortoise spirit, slow but steady progress. This culture encouraged innovation and rigorous quality control, ensuring that each product not only met but exceeded customer expectations. This commitment to quality helped Panasonic build a reputation as a reliable manufacturer, which was crucial as the company began to expand its footprint globally. Matusta also believed in the power of adversity as a catalyst for innovation. He often quoted, success is 99% failure, highlighting his view that failures and challenges should be used as stepping stones to greater achievements. This philosophy was put to the test during the Great Depression, a period that hit Panasonic hard. Instead of cutting back on production or innovation, Matusta saw this as an opportunity to refine the company's operations and focus on developing products that could bring genuine value to consumers struggling during economic hardships. Employee empowerment was another critical element of Matusta's philosophy. He was a proponent of respecting and nurturing the individual capabilities of each employee, advocating for policies that encouraged employee participation in problem-solving and decision-making processes. This approach not only motivated employees but also led to a more innovative and responsive business environment. Matusta's leadership style was ahead of its time, promoting a participatory work culture that is prevalent in many modern organizations today. Matusta's philosophies were encapsulated in his business motto, recognize your responsibilities as a business person. He saw business as a service to society, a way to fulfill civic duties, and he conducted his business dealings with honesty and integrity. This ethical approach won him not only the trust of his customers but also the respect of the broader business community. In summary, Chapter 2 has explored how Konosuke Matusta's unique business philosophies laid the foundation for Panasonic's success. His focus on social contribution, quality, innovation, resilience in the face of adversity, and employee empowerment constituted a holistic approach to business that was both progressive and profoundly impactful. As we move to the next chapter, we will see how these principles were instrumental in Panasonic's expansion on the global stage, turning it into a household name around the world. In this chapter, we explore the strategic maneuvers and leadership qualities that propelled Panasonic from a national brand in Japan to a formidable player on the global stage under Konosuke Matusta's visionary guidance. His foresight and adaptability were crucial in navigating the complex dynamics at international markets, establishing Panasonic as a global powerhouse in electronics. As Panasonic began to establish its footing within Japan, Matusta looked beyond the domestic markets to the vast opportunities abroad. The post-World War II era marked a significant turning point for Panasonic. The global landscape was rapidly changing, and technological innovations were in high demand. Matusta saw this as a prime opportunity for expansion but recognized that success would require a nuanced approach tailored to diverse consumer needs and cultural sensitivities. Matusta's leadership during this phase was characterized by his principle of cross-cultural management. He believed that for Panasonic to succeed internationally, it needed to deeply understand and respect the cultures and needs of its overseas customers. This led to a strategy that involved setting up manufacturing plants in different parts of the world, thus allowing Panasonic to produce locally and align its products with local tastes and preferences. This not only minimized production costs but also ingratiated the brand with local communities, as Panasonic was seen as contributing to the local economy. One of the first major tests of Panasonic's international strategy came with its entry into the U.S. market in the 1960s. Matusta personally oversaw this expansion, ensuring that the American consumer electronics market was approached with a clear understanding of its competitive and dynamic nature. Panasonic adapted its product lines to suit American preferences, focusing on high-quality, innovative products like color televisions and stereo systems, which were growing in popularity at the time. Matusta also emphasized the importance of innovation as a key driver of international success. Under his leadership, Panasonic invested heavily in research and development, leading to breakthroughs such as the development of the VHS video cassette recorder in the 1970s. This innovation not only revolutionized the video market but also firmly established Panasonic's reputation as a leader in cutting-edge technology globally. However, global expansion was not without its challenges. Matusta faced significant hurdles, from economic recessions to intense competition from other global electronics giants. His response to these challenges was guided by another of his core philosophies, resilience. Instead of retreating, Panasonic sought ways to innovate its operations, improve product quality, and enhance customer service. 
This resilience helped Panasonic to not only survive but thrive in the global market. Leadership in corporate responsibility was another area where Matusta led by example. He believed that a company's responsibility did not end with profit generation but extended to contributing positively to every region it operated in. This ethos led Panasonic to engage in various social responsibility initiatives, which helped build a positive brand image worldwide. In conclusion, Chapter 3 has chronicled the strategic and thoughtful expansion of Panasonic, under Konosuke Matusta's leadership. His ability to blend innovative products with a deep respect for local cultures and a strong emphasis on corporate responsibility were key factors in Panasonic's successful transformation into a global brand. As we move into the final chapter, we will reflect on the lasting impact of Matusta's leadership principles and how they continue to influence not only Panasonic, but also the broader world of business leadership. As we conclude our exploration of Konosuke Matusta's life and the monumental growth of Panasonic, it becomes evident that his influence extends far beyond the confines of his company. Matusta's legacy is woven into the fabric of modern corporate practices and continues to offer vital lessons for today's business leaders and entrepreneurs. Matusta's philosophy that a company should serve society, not just its shareholders, was revolutionary at the time and has now become a benchmark for corporate social responsibility. His belief in the social mission of businesses led Panasonic to prioritize sustainable practices and community involvement, initiatives that are increasingly relevant in today's environmentally conscious market. Matusta's approach shows that long-term success is built not only on financial gains but also on contributing positively to the world. Another significant aspect of Matusta's legacy is his pioneering leadership style, which emphasized empowerment and engagement at all levels of the organization. He was a proponent of the idea that good ideas can come from anywhere, and everyone in the company should have a voice. This democratic approach to leadership and innovation encouraged a culture of openness and creativity at Panasonic, which not only boosted morale but also led to groundbreaking innovations. This lesson is invaluable in the modern age, where the rapid pace of change requires constant innovation and adaptability. Matusta also left behind a legacy of resilience and perseverance. Through numerous economic downturns and market challenges, he maintained a steadfast belief in the potential for growth and improvement. His attitude towards challenges as opportunities for learning and development is a critical lesson for today's businesses, which operate in an environment that is volatile and filled with uncertainties. Matusta's resilience teaches us that persistence, coupled with a willingness to adapt, is essential for sustained success. Moreover, Matusta's emphasis on quality and customer satisfaction laid the groundwork for Panasonic's reputation as a reliable and trustworthy brand. He believed that the true value of a product lies in its ability to satisfy the customer's needs and that every product should be developed with the customer's happiness in mind. This customer-centric approach is more pertinent today than ever, in an age where customer expectations are higher and word of mouth travels faster, thanks largely to digital media. Konosuke Matusta was also a visionary in global strategy, understanding early on that to truly succeed internationally, a company must integrate itself into the local communities it serves. This global local mindset, often referred to as globalization, is increasingly adopted by multinational companies that aim to combine global quality standards with local tastes and preferences. In closing, the lessons from Konosuke Matusta's leadership are timeless. His holistic view of business as a vehicle for societal good, his innovative leadership practices, his resilience in the face of adversity, his unwavering commitment to quality and customer satisfaction, and his strategic global outlook, all serve as guiding principles for contemporary leaders. Matusta's story is a testament to the impact that visionary leadership can have on the world, transforming not just a company but also setting new standards in business practices. As we reflect on Matusta's life and work, let us draw inspiration from his dedication to improvement, not just for profit but for the greater good. His legacy offers a blueprint for building enduring businesses that remain relevant, responsible, and revered across generations.